morning all and welcome to another Q&A. Uh, right, let's start off, I will say a big thanks to Nick. I had a chat with Nick at London Creative yesterday. He's kind of my go-to guy when it comes down to videos and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna do an intro for the channel. I've been mucking about with them lately, you know, kind of, because I'm having to split those life on the freelance trucking ones into two because they're too long. And so now I'm doing like sort of next week on and previously on, and I said, do I need a title sequence? So I made a title sequence and everyone said, that's too long. Um, uh, but I'm going to try and do like an intro, kind of, you know, the, the sort of, this is what you can expect type thing. And also I'm going to try and do timestamps, which means if you're tuning in to watch the Sunday Q&A and you're really only interested in the truck bit or you're really only interested in the miscellaneous bit, you can just go straight to it, watch the questions you need. That way you don't have to trawl through 28 minutes worth of questions on a, a Sunday morning just to find out the bits you really need to know. So I'm just trying to sort of streamline it a little bit, make it life easier for everybody else. It probably won't work, but I'm gonna I'm gonna persevere. As my mate Dave the Crisp says, the only thing that failure cannot cope with is persistence. Um, I'm living testament to that, I'm still going. Uh, and also, uh, I wanna start off also saying to Tajish Patel, yeah, sorry I didn't get the Home Alone reference. Um, I think I saw it once when I was 18. I, I seem to think it, I, it was all right. Very, very reason why I just never got around to revisiting it, so maybe I'll have to give that one another bash. But um, work out who Kevin is. Kevin, presumably, is Macaulay Culkin, is he? He's got to be. They left Kevin at home, didn't they? Went, went on holiday or something. So, right. So without further ado, this week's one was making money without a van, which of course you can do. The Courier Exchange is not just designed for couriers; it's also designed for shippers and shipper couriers and companies, which is kind of what we're evolving into slowly. Um, Lee Westcott says, it's a shame that customers don't call the driver direct and cut out the middleman, then the customer can save a bit of money and the driver can make a bit more money. It is, but this is, this is why the career exchange exists, because the whole principle being, if, you're, if you've got a regular job going from like um, Dunstable, so you've, got, no, so you've got jobs coming out of Dunstable, but it goes here, there and everywhere, and you find yourself in Bristol, you ain't going to ring every, every um, company in the area and go, hi, I'm in Bristol. Go down through the telephone directory, AA Plumbing. Hi, I'm in Bristol. You got anything that needs to go to Dunstable? They, they think, so that's why it exists, and for that, there's got to be a fee. It's still better than being in Bristol and driving home empty, where there's someone in Bristol thinking, I've got something that goes back to Dunstable. I wish I knew someone. It, it, it works. I know the principle, it works. He also says, this is how I do long distance jobs. I only do hot shops or removal jobs. I charge 150 per mile round trip. Now, the, the round trip is the influence on that one. My home to home. And that has, that has worked for me for the last 20 years. I've never bothered spending money on the CX. My average weekly take-ins are a grand to 1,400, with just me in a three and a half ton panel van, generally speaking, on average three days a week. The round trip thing, I know Stubbards, I think, or they, for their lorries, they, I can't remember if it was either, they charged a pound a mile or two pound a mile. I'm guessing it's probably more like two pound a mile. But it would be from base to collection, from collection to drop off, and then from drop off back to base. So they were charging, you know, on paper, it's a bit like, we only charge. And then you go, yeah, hold on a second, that's for an entire round trip. He might be charging a quid more than you, but he's just charging me for the distance he's going. So, I mean, at the end of the day, customers will go with who they are. I know what you're saying there, particularly if you're doing the removals, Lee, because that's my mate Martin. He does removals, and he toyed with the idea of doing the CX for a little while. Say, for example, you've got our smooth. Um, you're picking up in Luton in the morning, you've got to drive it down to Swindon, but by the time you've done two hours loading the van, then driven down to Swindon, then waited for the key exchange, then done two hours unloading the van, the last thing you want to do is like drive another 50 miles, pick something up, drop it, it's just, you, you've done your day's work, go on, be happy, and if it works for you, mate, that's all I care. Everyone, you do it your way. Everyone does it their own way, that's the good thing about it. Uh, TC Services says, I've got a question. He says, how long do shippers wait before they get paid from their customers? Is it the same for us drivers who often wait over a month to get paid? Well, yes, it's worse. As C11 Yan says, he says, on the CX you can create an invoice and go mental if it's not paid on time. With end users, it's a job number, purchase order, who booked it. Interesting, nobody ever asked, asked for a POD, just who booked it. Then they say it's um, 30 EOM. If you're lucky, it's 27 um, from the end of the end of, yeah, 30 days end of the month. If you're lucky, 27 days end of the month. 
raise the flag if any quicker, because um, then you get 45 days from the end of the month, 60 days end of the month is more realistic for end users, and end user customer won't think twice about owing you 20k and not paying on time, and yet still look at you as insignificant, as an insignificant, unnecessary part of their business. He's right. We've got um, one of our firms, and you have to jump, I know I'm going to get the dough, but they, you, they just keep paying late. And it's a lot of dough. It's you know every time it's like four grand in a hit, so it's it's, it's a reasonable amount of money. And you would turn around to them and go, "Why are you keep paying late?" But they do. But then again, they they, they keep looking us. They keep spending. It. I know I'm going to get it. They just drag it out. So you're actually better off from the point of view of getting paid. And then I've got another end user I've done a job from him. I don't do it very often, in fairness, which is a shame. Um, within two days, he's chasing me saying, "Oh, where's my invoice? I want to pay it." I go, "We haven't even raised it yet." Oh no, no, where is it? I want to pay it. Oh, I've got to go and see him. <laughs> I'm sort of like, I said to him, I said, Phil, I wish all my customers were like you, but there you go, so. Uh, Sprinter driver says, he says, um, so an end user rings 20 or more owner drivers trying to find someone available and you take 20 prices. Not going to happen. We've got better things to do. They ring an approved supplier and he can do the shifting through the dross the, um, as the, uh, the, the CX has become due to YouTubers. Are you having a pop at me now? <laughs> I never set out to do any of this stuff. It just evolved. Um, but yeah, no, like, like you know, like the CX does work for that reason. I don't know if the CX is for the dross. I think, you know, like there's, there's plenty of good couriers on there. There's ones that aren't that great, but they don't tend to last very long. And they get replaced by other ones that, don't last that aren't that great and don't last very long. We call it the conveyor belt of fools. I think it works. Works for me. Um, Godzilla says... This is all regarding the CX and booking night. Um, it works great if it's a booking for tomorrow morning, but then within the hour, most drivers simply can't drop everything and hang around and wait for the first call. He said, I dropped 10 users as it simply wasn't possible to do the work most of the time I was already booked, was in the wrong part of the country, etc., etc. You can also rely on, say, one customer giving you a job a day, but you can't do that work for whatever reason. They go elsewhere in, and you have a world of pain having to contact having your contacts exposed to others. Again, mate, that's that's why the CX involved. So if you can do that job for that customer, you do that job for that customer. If you can't because you're booked, then you stick it on CX and get someone else to come in and do it. Bolive, Bolive the cat. I don't mind. You can push it on me. Oh, that's lovely. You, you can do the video. Uh, Jeremy Hawk, he says, um, he's, he's with this response to Lee, I think. He said, Lee, a lot of couriers would not know how to deal with customers. They would be on the phone for, to some uni graduate in London moaning about co uh, costs and lack of profit. It all comes in time. You know, you kind of learn as you go, don't you, really? Well, I used to say on the, on the market, I had like a set of armour that some of it, you'd always get a comment and it would be like, it would be like you got stabbed and eventually you'd build a plate to it. Can I have this cheaper? No. You know, I am your customer. You know, I, I spend a lot of money with you. I spend a lot of money in Sainsbury's. They don't give me no money off. You know, but then eventually you build up a set of armour and then and I still have a knife would go, I haven't heard that line before and it would get you. But then you put a patch on it. So as you learn, you sort of build up a set, you know what the responses are, what to say, where to go. It's all part of a learning curve, you know. So uh, Shane Hardy says, an idea, Pete, get the guys in the office to do video on the shipper side of things. Or have, or have them write a script um, that sort of helps with these. The thing is, Shane, not everyone's that comfortable in front of a video. I'm kind of lucky in the fact that obviously everyone's got a superpower. My, my wife draws fantastically. Um, they've just got eyes for stuff, smells and stuff like that. Everyone can do something great. My mate Dave the Chris is a phenomenal guitarist. Everybody has got a skill. My skill seems to be standing up in front of people without getting scared and talking nonsense. It's not the greatest superpower in the world. I'd rather be able to fly or fire laser beams from my eyes. And I don't know why, because it's a pretty pointless thing, but you could probably get a job welding. Um, but, yeah, the office... Not everybody wants to be in front of a camera. So my plan is, as it evolves, and it is evolving, we're looking to get another truck sometime soon, which means we're up to five. And when we're up to five, and once we get fleet, I might not be in my lorry all the time. I might be the kind of like the, um, the spare wheel filling in for people that are off, which means I might be in the office more. And when I'm in the office more, and when I understand the office more, because I'm in the office more, I will do videos about the office, and then you'll see the shipper side of things. But at the moment, it's a bit like right about what you know. I can only really talk about what I do, and because I don't do the office, I can't really 
show you the office. But once I've got the hang of it, there's going to be a load more about the offices. I'll get there. We'll get there. Right, so we did the other video this week, Pete the Courier Detective. And if you guys are out there running, you see part two. That's coming out on Thursday. I'm going to launch them on Thursday. It's about five o'clock, I think. And oh, in our work, lads, ladies, if you're out there running, oh, how many times? It's just like, you didn't need a career on this job. You needed Miss Marple. Trying to find you. I'm trying to, I, I think my favourite one once, I think, I think I said this before, is the delivery address was Reading and a postcode. And I went, yeah, I think I'm going to need a bit more than that. Oh, and the postcode was wrong. I said, I think I'm going to need a bit more than that. The bloke when it's near the church. I went, yeah, there's quite a few churches in Reading. Can you um, narrow it down a bit for me, please? So, um, but yeah, you do, you do the skills. So TC Services says on this one, he says, um, done a few jobs to Waitrose delivering cake samples to Bracknell. I thought that was the main site as it was huge with massive buildings everywhere. Thankfully, I found my drop-off point very quickly. Yeah, this one wasn't Waitrose. It turns out GXO is running out of Waitrose um, out of their car park. And they're, th they're sending in about four lorries a day with plumbing supplies. I've got the hang of it now. I'm doing it quite a lot. I've got a book next week as well, in fairness. And the, once you've got the hang of it, it's easy. But the first time, it took me an hour just to work out where I was supposed to be going. Um, Dan on a runs comment it says, have you still got your seat on Pogo setting? Yeah, I can't seem to turn that off. Um, I think it's likely that GXO have the contact to manage all the logistics for Waitrose, John Lewis. GXO, DHL and Wing Canton, etc. tend to do this kind of contract. The big shops often farm out logistics to two expert firms. To, so, to these expert firms, I find my class... Oh, yeah, he said, I took my class one test this week, sadly, I felt sorry, mate. Well, you're not running in a small van no more. You're going to do videos running in the truck. That's okay. People watch them. Um, they don't watch mine, but they watch other people's. Uh, I, I have a retest on the 17th. Passed all the reversing, MOD, CPC, hitch and unhitch with the instructors. So not a total loss. It's going to cost him about a monkey to re five 595 quid. Mate, persistence is the only thing that failure cannot cope with. You just keep going till you get there, and it'll be interesting to see you out in a class one. Uh, with life on a row with Van on the run in his um in his he, he's big time Charlie Laurie, not like me, in me Mickey Mouse eighteen ton. Actually it's not Mickey Mouse, is it eighteen ton? <laughs> it's kind of I run of my mates turned around and I showed him a video and he went, Your lorry's big, isn't it? I went, Well, yeah, it's kinda of lorry size to be honest with you. But you shrink them really quickly. Honestly, when you when you first look at them you think it's enormous and within two weeks you're jumping into it like it's a mini metro. Right. Questions on the wise guys, which this week actually I might be able to answer some of these. You know, I, I feel like the, I feel like the guy on Mastermind who comes third. You know, I don't know all of the questions, but sometimes I know some of them. Eighteen out of pop master. We'll come to radio at the end. Um, <laughs> Alan H says, "Can you run one lorry, or do they expect you to run more?" No, you can run one. One of the guys who's doing the GXO with us is an owner operator. He's based in Dunstable, he's got one truck, he's got an operator's license, I assume he's got one or two slots on it, one lorry, parked locally, drives his lorry like you'd just drive a van. Owner operator, that's him. He, I said, any plans to expand? No, he's happy. Happy driving the lorry, gets his day's wages, he's happy. The LNH also says, do they let you run one load at a time? No. You can run more than one load, particularly on trucks, it's called co-loading, you have to tell them. When you pick up the first load, they'll expect you to deliver direct. If another load comes up, you've got to ring up the first load and go, do you mind if I fetch another load? They'll say yes or no. Then you can ring up the second guy and say, I can take your, your load, but I've got another load on board. They'll say yes or no, but if they both say yes, you can do it. It doesn't happen that often. And we've got a question from Lion. He says, he said, first of all, he says, yes, I think I'll get a 7.2 van with no taco. And he says, what do I think 7.2 ton vans? Lion, there's no such thing as a 7.2 ton van, as far as I know. There's a 3.5 ton van, which tends to be the weight limit on vans, because anything over 3.5 tons needs a taco. You can get a 5.5 ton van, which is the ones that the Royal Mail run. They look like Newtons with tail lifts, but they can carry 5.5 tons, but they run with tacos. And you get a 7.5 ton truck, which runs with a taco. I've never heard of a 7.2 ton van. If anybody is out there and knows of a 7.2 ton van, put me right. But if you want my advice line, I would say go for a, seven, a three and a half ton Luton with a cur with the tail and with a curtain if you can get it. If not, get a, get a box Luton with a tail and think about getting the curtain fixed, getting fitted quickly. You will get your money back. And that takes us neatly onto miscellaneous, which if the timestamps work, you may well just be doing right now. Oh yeah, I meant to write down where they are, didn't I? 
Oh, God. I'll have to go back and do that. Uh, Darren, I'm learning something. You see, you learn as you go. My plan was to write down where they are by looking at the red thing at the top there, which I can see, but you can't at the moment. I'm just pointing in the air. And go, right, I can put time set there, time set there, and I'm going to have to play the whole thing back. That's okay. I can do that. Darren Hiddle says, how best to approach businesses as a sole trader? I assume you're talking about end user customers. Darren, there's a video on it. I'll do you a link. Just pan yourself across and... Um, there you go. The sort of it's, you know there are ways and means of getting end user customers. It's basically legwork. It's not. There's no shortcuts. But if you keep going, you will get them. Uh, Z Terra says he says oh my god, but he doesn't say that. He says I've been watching your CX videos for a while now. Every time you mentioned market trader, I thought it was stocks and shares. <laughs> now your character makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I should have a flat cap on for this, shouldn't I? Um, not to simplify your character, but I can definitely see a correlation between the way you confidently present yourself and being street markets. That's actually mad. I suppose you do. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that when I started at the age of 11, I was pitching records on Milton Keynes Market. Come on out, girls. All your favourites on there. Jeff loves Banjo Party. All the old ones, all the gold ones in a gatefold sleeve. Yeah, no, that's me. Street market trader, not market stocks and shares. Ironically enough, my wife said in conversation, I tell my, my husband was a market trader. And if they assumed that they, they meant sort of like in the city, she said, I never corrected them. I was proud to be a market trader. It's a real job. I'm proud to be an lorry driver. It's a real job. It's not airy-fairy. It does. It produces something. And you meet real people. You don't meet fake people. You know, like if you work in fashion. My, my kids in the wet. And she said she did a fashion for a little while. She don't, she's doing the interior design. That's okay. It's a little bit. You know, when well, no, that's not a little bit. It's more than a little bit. But it's not as bad as some. You know, it's kind of cardboard people. People I meet are real people. And I'm happy with that. As for stocks and shares people, mm, I don't know if you have them. They're all right. Um, and if you want to go back, and it, it also does prove the channel is what it is. If you go back right to the very beginning, there's a load of videos with me standing on a street market, doing the street market thing. So they're very short and not very good. Not exactly selling it to you, but they're there if you want um, and now we come to the part of the show as usual. We've got the Steve Campbell part of the show, which is he's put me straight because he knows the prisoner thing. On the, he said, regarding the razor blade, if a, as a prisoner you have an illegally smuggled phone in your cell and you do not have a charger, you can make your own phone charger by breaking a razor casing open. Then you take the blade out from within. The blade is the ideal size to push into the charging point of a lot of phones. You fold up one end so that it goes into the phone and fold it in gives you a good snug fit. The other end you tie two wires and push it into a plug socket and plug your TV into the same socket. Never the kettle, as the kettle takes a lot more amps and blows the electrics to the full wing and even the house block. <laughs> <coughs> It's good, it's good to be filled in on these things, Steve. He also said, oh, this is what I want to do, actually. I keep meaning to do this one. I think I'm, I'm surprised I haven't done it before. Um, he said, I had a horrible fork truck driver the other day. He said, speak to me like rubbish on hay from docks. And at last Friday, so he said, so I closed my curtains and, and just drove off. Um, he said, I was on site within time. I had my break. I said, refused to let him tip me. They needed it tipped by 2 p.m. Um, for it to be on the ship. I got there at half one, which is when he was supposed to be, so I was on time. I had 20 minutes drive time uh, before my break, so I figured they needed it more than I did, which is fair enough. I had this thing, someone else asked me, do you ever get surly fork truck drivers? And I want to do one and what to do if you get a surly fork truck driver. There are ways and means of turning these things around. And finally, he said, I miss circuit. Circuit is good. I do videos for the circuit channel. I'll do you a link to the channel. Please check it out. If you're doing the multi-drop, um, I, 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 transparency, I do get paid to do their videos for them, but I don't mind because every, it's really good. It's not the cheapest multi drop out there, but it's a very, very, very good app. So if you're doing a multi drop, please check it out. It'll cost you, it'll cost you a few quid on a month, but I believe me, I'm, I reckon you'll be grateful for it. Like you know, so. And finally, in conclusion, this week, Hong Kong Fu says, "Roll on winter when it's hailstorming, snowing." persisting it down, blowing a gale in your open area, uh, connecting your charging cable with no overhead coverage while trying to use contactless, still prefer it. And the final notes this week are going to go on to um, about radio. Uh, Godzilla's, because I did discuss on my radio stations, Godzilla's one is, he says, he said, Popmaster, he said, I want it 31, if I remember correctly. Can't have 31. They're in threes. It's either 30 or 33, unless you get one third of a question right, which you, you, could, you could award yourself a single bonus point. 
Uh, average is 12 to 18. Yeah, mine's about that. Uh, used to be more, but recently the questions have got harder. I don't know if they've got harder or if they're now more contemporary. Anything past 2000 I struggle with because after 2000, I stopped listening to Radio 1 and 2 and started listening to 6 Music. And 6 Music questions, those kind of music questions, don't come up on Popmaster because presumably it's not pop music, it's indie music or rap music, which doesn't come up so often. Um, I get all super excited when I get the first five correct and then, of course, bomb out with all of the other questions. Yep. Um, if the missus is sat next to me, I tend to get three. No idea why. Just one of those things. When I used to work on the market, coming back to it, I could add up all day long. I add up like a rocket. My dad stood, stood over my shoulder. just like You could see him checking every single time he checked I got it wrong. I spoke to my mum. My mum said it once, and I went, yeah, does the same to me. As soon as I know he's watching, puts me off. Uh, radio for me. Radio 1 in the morning, then flicking across because um, he doesn't like the new the weatherman guy. Yeah, he's all ball. They're OK. The, the weatherman guy's a bit in your face. Um, <laughs> then Radio 2 for an hour, flick around 12 to see what the socialist got doing for a day, then Bye Bye Vine once again, absolute. And he's also uh, X Music as well. DAB has not been good to me. Too many channels to cruise around. Uh, yeah, DAB is good. DAB, I do it through my phone. I do a setup. Oh, that's another one I want to do the setup in the line. Radio setup. I just set up in the line. Um, now, the, the, the radio, the, I haven't got DAB radio in the line. You could fit one, but I just use my phone. I've been using my phone for ages. I've got one in Bluetooth connectors. Put, put, the, um, put the phone on, hit the iPlayer, and it's good. I, I go between two and six. Um, and used to, X, used, X Music, Radio X used to be good back in the day with Christian O'Connell and stuff like that. But the adverts got one of those. And I just like the, um, I've, I like the real diversity that six plays. It's good. And finally, Ian Coyon says, Heart 80s radio station is good. No, it's not. <laughs> Still, you do you. Everyone does it their own way. Isn't that the wonderful thing? So, right, that's only Q&A. Like I say, I'm going to try and timestamp it if I can. And I'm going to do a little intro. And there's, there's part two of uh, Freelance Trucking, the Career Detective. I think that's coming out. Is it Career Detective this week? Yeah, I think it is. Um, and then there's, I've recorded next week. So you've got to get ahead with these things because it takes so long. But it's all coming. Hope you're still enjoying it. Hope you get out there, you know, and take care. Take money.